turn up. <laughs> this is really scary. <laughs> um, right, this is going to be a little bit of a journey. From We were a very early Moodle adopter. We're an FD college in East London. And um, before Moodle, we had a, a system called Granada LearnWise, and it bombed. It was so unstable, and it worked so badly um, that people were looking for a new our institution was looking for a new solution. Moodle came along. Moodle was open source. It was free. We'll have that. Um, that was 2004. That was before I joined e-learning. Now, I joined e-learning in 2007. And it took me about a year to just learn the job and make sense of what was actually going on. Now, I'll talk you through what's happened since 2007, since you know my observations of what happened up till then, and just my stock take in 2007, and what I've done to move them gently, kicking and screaming away from that approach. So in 2007, what I found was that our VLE was literally sprouting. Right? We were sprouting. At that time, we sprouted about a Moodle a minute. Right? And poor Sean here in the front, who does our technical support, <laughs> knows what a pain it was and what a pain it is to do every patch, every security patch, every upgrade, and everything multiple times. Because, and I don't know the reasoning behind this insanity, but we had, um, we have basically one Moodle per curriculum area, okay? So the cultural and creative will have their own Moodle, the care team will have their own Moodle, and um, so that makes it quite complicated. But it, it's, well, the assumption is in our team, our team is very much design-based, right? A lot of the people who are on our team come from a design background, graphic designers, web designers, so the assumption is pretty much, if, if, if it's pretty, people will use it. Right? So there was a lot of emphasis on, on themes and icon sets and, and the navigation of it. We'll make it all very flashy. Instead of really focusing on the creativity, on the, you know, what users might want to do with it, how it's meant to be used, I think there was a lot of, or a very little understanding of, of what Moodle could do, really, as a, as a pedagogical tool. Um, I've hinted at the complexity of having at one point, I think we had 12, 12 or 15 different Moodles. And you know, many separate Moodles for you know, everyone is sort of, if it's personalized, if it's customized, people will use it. So we'll have lots of plugins, we'll have special themes, we'll have different bits and pieces. So again, for somebody like me coming into the job in 2007, trying to make sense of what's on each individual site to maintain it and to just juggle the whole thing was such a huge task. Um, and thirdly, there was a very mechanistic way of training staff, teaching staff up. And again, I, I think that's because the team is very design focused. And they don't come from a teacher's perspective. Now, I don't come from a teacher's perspective, but I've, I've done a lot of staff training whenever I've worked in other roles. Um, it kind of just always naturally came to me to train people. So in those days, in the pre-Janina days, it was kind of well, if we teach them how to upload their documents, if we teach them how to upload their notes and their PowerPoints, they'll use it. Well, of course, that didn't happen. So we've ended up with Moodle being a very pretty filing cabinet, um, or very many different filing cabinets and pretty ones. Um, the next bit's purely on training, because I think the training has made the huge difference. But before that, you know, I should say hindsight is a beautiful thing, so I came in, I look back on it. I don't know why these things were designed the way they were. I can only speculate. I can only look back on it, in fairness to my team. Um, training, then, was very much we show someone a tool. They go away. They don't really play with it because it doesn't really make any sense. They forget. Right? So they'll come back. We train them, again, on the same tool, the same process. They go away. They don't really engage with it because it's out of context. They'll forget. So they come back. We train them again. And you can see why I call this the wash, rinse, and repeat method of training. Well, are you dizzy yet? <laughs> <laughs> because to be honest, I was very dizzy very soon as well. And so I decided we needed to climb out of that washing <coughs> machine cycle of just taking training that narrowly. So I sat down, and after about a year in the job, and I thought, I'm going to look at this. And I analyzed what, what the kind of training that we were doing. 
Now, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with the approaches necessarily, but there was too much focus on those, and there wasn't enough sort of overall sort of um, putting things into context. There were one-size-fits-all group training. So that's your uh, professional development days, where you put up a topic, and people sign up pretty much like here. You have no idea who's going to pitch up, what their interests are, um, what their technical abilities are. Um, so you'll end up with a room full of people. Some of them can barely use a computer. Some of them are whizzing away. Um, some are just there because their manager said, it would be really good for you to be in that session. So you get those, and you get this, oh my god, this is exciting. So trying to do that on, on this kind of scale with a room full of people like this is impossible. So my lesson learned from that in groups like that, you might as well forget it. No one really wins. The second approach to training is demand-driven group training. And what I mean by that was we'd have like a, a bunch of plumbers or a bunch of bakers come into us and say, oh, we really want to know how to do assignments. Now, what they really meant by that is, can you show us how to upload, how to just upload our documents, our assignments, right? So that's all they want to know. So lesson learned from that was, given the choice, staff only want to know more of what they already sort of know, or they think they know how to do it properly. But when you then go, well, if you do it as a Moodle assignment, no, I don't want to know how to do that. I want to just upload my assignment. That's what students need. So in that kind of training scenario, you don't, again, you don't get to address that bigger question of why am I even doing this? Is there a better way of doing this? Yeah. And the third um, type of training is the ad hoc one-to-one -one training. You know, the, the sort of situation where you're sitting there, you're beavering away, you're looking at some code, and you're doing stuff. And you, this person just edges closer and closer to your desk, and they're hovering and hovering. Have you got two minutes to show me how to do a Moodle quiz? Yeah, sure. So <laughs> you show them how to do a Moodle quiz really quickly. But of course, they're doing it in their course, right? So they just dump it there. So you'll end up with lots of course pages that I've got, test this and one, two, three, that. And they, of course, never go back to it because it's just, you know, they just create carnage. And again, they have no idea how that impacts on the learner if that just sits there and on, on the maintenance of the course as well and if they're teaching with other people and sharing the same course. So no concept of that. And I said, well, that's, we'll have to do something about that. So over the years, we ended up with a whole host of staff who used Moodle as a very blunt tool to basically do what they've always done. And I needed to come up with a way of retraining my army of robots <laughs> into something a bit more creative and into something a bit more um, individual, just to show them. And creativity got mentioned a lot this morning. And you know, the whole creativity approach and a creative approach to Moodle and what you can do with it if you use it properly, as it was intended. Then I looked at my audience after I analyzed my training. I looked at my audience. And that's basically the three sort of audience types that, that we've got. We've got the God, let's just get this over and done with. You know, why do I need to do this anyway? I can just put my documents on the shared drive and they can download it from there. So we're totally missing the point. Then we've got the, oh my God, shiny brigade, you know, who jump onto every next bit of technology and they're just well away anyway. They, you know, we don't really care about them. Don't really care about the, don't want to waste my energy on the, on the people who don't want to engage at all. It's the middle bit that I want to focus on because they are the skeptics. They sit in the middle. They go, mm, that looks interesting, but I'm a bit confused by it. I'm not really that confident. Mm, what can it do for me? Now, actually, um, the small print is, you know, my Barking College, um, or Barking Dagenham College as it is now, audience looks a bit more like that. So we've got a large proportion of may, a larger proportion of maybes, and a small proportion of yay. And, um, hoping to turn that around. And luck luckily, the, the yays are growing. But there's still a lot of maybes there. Um, so what I needed to come up with was an effective, comprehensive, individual sort of approach to training them. But it needed to be sustainable as well. So I didn't want that whole washing machine cycle thing again. And um, this is what I came up with. I t totally redesigned all the training approach for e-learning. And what I created was like a three-tier system um, of basics, essentials, what I call essentials, and intensives. Um, the basics are basically really just to help yourself. Lots of video tutorials, screencasts, help sheets, FAQs, 
stuff that people can do. You know, the, you know, those people who go, I haven't got the time for this. Well, there's a three-minute video. It's much faster to look at that video and follow the steps than to phone me up or write me an email. Then it gets bounced around from one person to the other. You know, save yourself the trouble. And if that, even that is hard. And I found that you have to be cruel to be kind. It's been kind of, oh, can you just quickly show me? No, there's a video tutorial. Oh, but can you quickly show? No, there's a video tutorial. Kind of constantly just being rude in a way, you know, just bouncing them back to it. But it's made all the difference because they now find the video tutorials, for starters. It's so much easier to just ask than to help yourself. And, and people are naturally lazy. So it's, it's kind of forcing them out of that zone where they're just relying on you to constantly help them. Because there's one of me, and there's, what, 500 teaching staff? You know. Um, the next level up from that is a is essentials. It's the e-learning and Moodle essentials for teachers and course administrators. And it's got such a long title because I wanted to get as much into it as possible. And that's a three times 90 minute um, e-learning Moodle-based course. Right? So it's a blended approach. It's three times 90 minute session time plus independent study. It's structured in such a way that if you wanted to, you could do it entirely from distance. But people just don't opt for that. At the moment, they don't opt for that. Um, it's supported by a support forum, by a chat room. We, we agree a weekly chat time where people can log on and, and talk to other people. Once you're enrolled on the course, you stay on the course. So it's kind of the sustainability effect of that is to get people constantly so that they stick around on the support forum. They see the questions that come in. So I'm building them up to mentor the others, the newcomers. So they're constantly staying on it. And on that course, we tackle all sorts of things. And it's not just Moodle. Moodle is the biggest part, because obviously I want them to use Moodle. But we also look at um, all the social tools you can um, hook into it, web content, open courseware, um, repositories on the web that you can link into it or draw content in from. Just the whole idea of embedding stuff, embedding content so students don't stray off to YouTube and look stuff up themselves, just to be able to embed that into not just web pages, uh, but into quizzes, into forums, into anything and everything, and making it useful and putting it into context. So context is really important, and creativity is also very important. For example, one thing, I mean, just explaining what Moodle stands for, you know, just, just to break it down and say modular, object-oriented, dynamic learning environment, and explaining to them what it actually means, you know, that it's not just something that rhymes with poodle and noodle. The amount of times the penny just, you know, lights go on, they, ah, oh, that's why it's called that. And all of a sudden, they've got that context, that modular means this, and dynamic means that. Um, creative, cop creative Commons, copyright. Layouts, themes, make it your own. So it's very much based on, on the creativity of that. And also forget about the label. If something's called a glossary, does, that doesn't mean it has to be a bland list of words. It can be lots of different things. So just play with it. You know, change the, the, the themes. We've preloaded lots of themes so people can experiment. They have a playground area that they can, where they have got teaching rights so they don't mess around in their own courses. They'll have a, a playground course hooked into that. Um, and it's being used. And people are suddenly going, oh, wow, I had no idea I could do that. Following on from that three-session course, they can then pick one aspect of the course that they've really enjoyed. And it should be the one that they think is going to make the most difference to their existing course. So if they've really enjoyed quizzes or really enjoyed glossaries, come back, book on one hour, one aspect of Moodle, and one task. So your existing material. So if you've got a handout with questions on, what can we do with it? Can we turn that into a quiz? And I want them to focus on that one tool, to build confidence on that one tool. And the idea behind that is, is if I've got a whole course of essentials people, so say three or four essentials people, everyone picks a different um, intensive, they can hook up and train each other on those because they're confident, hopefully using one thing. Rather than over, you know, um, overloading them, you need to know all these tools. You need to know what they're capable of, but you don't need to necessarily be an expert using it. So this is kind of training them to be experts in one thing, and then hopefully I'll, I'll have lots of experts per staff room on different tools, and they can help each other out and, and build collaboratively. So that's the, again, that's the sustainable 
aspect to, to the setup, the training setup. Um, that worked well. Um, then, then we upped the ante and we said, okay, every course now needs to have, after about a year of running essentials, we said, every course needs to contain these three things. It needs to have a means of communication, a variety of course materials, and a form of assessment. And that can be self-assessment, that can be sort of practice quizzes, or that could be proper assessment assessment. Um, that could just be an uploaded assignment, an offline assignment. We gave them choice what, what they wanted to do. Um, communication equally could, could have been a chat room, a forum, forum um, all sorts of different ways of, of providing those things. But we thought, well, if I am a learner and I've missed sessions, I need those things to really enable me to study from home. Yeah? We didn't stop there. Southampton City College developed a block, the gold, silver, blonde, bronze block. Does anyone else use that? No? No one else heard of it? No one else using it? Um, well, we s modified the, the um, criteria, modified the scripts last summer, and put it onto all the courses. And um, the reasoning was that you can earn medals depending on how well you execute the these, these three criteria. So depending on what kind, how much time and effort you've invested in your course, the higher your medal will be. So at a very low level, at a bronze level, all you'd need to do, in, uh, do is put in a, a basic forum, a, um, an offline assignment, a few labels, nothing much more than that, and you would still get your bronze medal. So really low criteria. Um, obviously, for people who invest more time, who come onto training, who engage with their course and make their course more interactive, the higher the medal will be. So for a, a gold medal, we'd expect things like a lesson or um, a database, something like that that takes a lot of time and a lot of thinking and preparation to, to, to put together. Cunningly, that also hooks in nicely with the training options. So <laughs> basics. You know, you, you just really need to watch the basics or take the crib sheets in order to get a bronze medal. It really isn't that hard. Essentials will teach you how to use the tools creatively. So, you know, to make those tools, those Moodle tools, applicable to your, to your subject and sort of build your content around those Moodle tools or package them in, in those tools. And intensives is for those hardcore people who really, you know, wow, I'm going to make the most of this. I'm really going to use this. And I can honestly say, I've seen this past year, I've seen staff turning up in e-learning who I've never seen before. They go, what do I need to do to get that silver medal? She's got a silver medal, I haven't, what do I need to do? And all of a sudden, that's been the interesting psychological side effect. All of a sudden, people are competing against each other. Right? So it's no longer about Moodle, it's about the competition about the medals. So that's been fantastic because it's got people enthusiastic. Um, and it's really been sort of cool beans ever since, really. Um, People are far more motivated, far more enthusiastic. There's far more interaction going on with the students as well, because all of a sudden they're enabled to do stuff. Previously, they had courses with, and we still have a lot of courses that have just got bland PowerPoints and Word documents and you know static kind of content. Where as a student, if I've gone to it, I've downloaded it, I've printed it, I have no reason to go back. Um, suddenly it's beginning to get there. They are getting a bit more interactive. It's still a long journey to go, but it has made a huge difference. Um, interestingly, management, senior management still don't quite get it. They're still more interested in, oh, that department's got 30 medals. Why have we only got 21? You know, not interested in necessarily what do I need to put in place in order to get my department there, but it's like, well, are you sure those, those scripts are counting correctly? Yes, I am. <laughs> By the way, we're not just using the automated scripts. We do go through it. So if somebody has lo got lots of test practice quizzes that are really quite rubbish and that's just their attempt of playing, we do pick them up um, and you know, manually adjust uh, medals if we have to. Um, and that is pretty much how it's been. I mean, the Essentials course, you can download the Essentials course if you want to. Essentials Lite, like a reduced version of, of the course, was entered into the Moodle Cool Courses competition and won its category. So if you want the light version, you can download it and install it. It's a 1.9 Moodle, so you'll have to install it into a 1.9. You can tweet me at learningtechie if you want, e-learningtechie even. 
And that is pretty much my approach. How am I doing for time? I've done excellent on time. Yeah. Plenty of time for questions. Go for it. Do students have input to medals? Um, no, at the moment they don't. Um, I'm not sure how we would give them input. <coughs> there, there are modules available to, we're looking at those, but I think primarily at the moment the, the move is to, to just get staff to put stuff there and just make it, at the moment it literally is just the e-learning team just trying to get people onto training, um, assessing for quality and just getting people trained up and getting people to see what it can do for them before we let students loose on it because you know, I think it would just destroy confidence if we let students loose and students went, that's really, really pants. Um, you know, don't really want to do that, not just yet. You know, I think it's a little bit early, but we, yeah, we are, we have discussed it, and we may go there in the future. But yeah, early steps. I don't want to demolish those. You know, the, the newfound enthusiasm. I don't really want to dampen it just yet. Um, yeah, thanks for the input. We have, we have um, actually looked at that. So we do spot check. So if something scores a goal, you know, we'll go, oh, that's a bit unexpected. What's happening here? And yeah, we, we are aware of who's using it. But most of the time, actually, um, those courses that have started adapting and, and personalizing it with special themes and, you know, really tailoring it around and making it individual, um, engagement has gone up. So the quizzes are being used, the forums are being used. Um, All of them, all of them. If that is, if if it's a if it's a course, if it's available for, for students to enrol on, they'll have a Moodle course. Yeah, go on. On the essentials course. Yeah, you have to prod. You know, you have to prod them, and you have to. The way I do it, I post interesting links. I post videos, I'll ask them to comment on stuff, I'll make announcements for other workshops that I do outside of it. You know, you have to, if they're not used to participating in, in online forums and in online communities, and a lot of our teaching staff are expert bricklayers and expert plumbers and, and, and all that, but they're not really, you know, academically focused. Com going near computers is something they have to do rather than they want to do in, in a lot of cases. So you have to, you know, guide them and s show them that there is value to it. The one thing I do do in the course is um, I insist that questions outside of the session, don't email me questions, I'll ignore them. You will put them in the forum. You will share that with people who have done the course before you. And I always give those people who've done the course already like 24 hours to respond to any newcomers' questions. And the reason I'm forcing them, again, this is like cruel to be kind, but I'm forcing them to engage and also for my own sanity, because if I get the same question from like five, six different people, I'm <coughs> answering it, five, six, I haven't got the time. Put it on there, I'll answer it once, and then it's there for everyone to see for the, you know, for the future. So again, it's, it's that sustainability thing. There was a lady at back. I am, I have, I'm finally getting there. Sean is laughing because <laughs> Sean will have to do, help us with, with a lot of the stuff. But yes, my prayers have been answered. Finally, we are starting to merge. This, this summer we will be migrating. Yeah, Hurrah. The team, yeah, for, well, and those are just the ones that you were supporting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. You know my pain. Um, I just wanted to put this across to the staff. You mentioned about um, the courses within the course. Um, I was just going to say that there's some students in that course. Okay. And there's some professional technical staff in that course. And basically, um, the, the, the students that are putting one, the performance of each of the subjects are numbered. So you label it, number it, share the notes. Mm -hmm. But the share of the notes is important to make sure it's logged. So okay. you can then say, you know, 
one thing I want to do is wean people off the, the reliance on Word and PowerPoint and Office and stuff because it's not collaborative enough for me. It's it's not accessible enough for me. It's you know on tiny little on on a mobile phone and, and stuff like that. It doesn't work. So what I'm trying to do with Essentials, um, if you if you download the course and you look at it, most of it is. In fact, I could show you. If you do you want to see it? Hang on. Let's see if we can. If I can get. Let's have a look. Where is it? Where is it? That's, that's what the beast actually looks like. Um, and it is a bit of a beast. There is a lot of stuff there for three minute, for three 90 minute sessions. However, um, it is open to anyone to do a lot of stuff in their spare time. So all the different extra links and things. So as you can see, there's not a Word document inside. It's all um, web pages and um, tutorials and so I've, I've really packaged it using Moodle. I, I practice what I preach. If I want to get um, staff off doing documents, um, <laughs> then I better show them how to do that as well. There's all that kind of stuff. The internet connection in here is really slow. I mean, the amount of people who don't realize that they could embed um, live maps and, and things in Moodle, anywhere within Moodle, anywhere where they've got the form editor is quite staggering. And once you show them that, they're well away and they're going, oh yeah, I can use that in this and that in the other context. Um, also the amount of, just the amount, sheer amount of side blocks that are stuck on there, just for demo purposes more than anything. But again, it's kind of play with it. Pick the ones that suit your course, pick the ones that you think are useful for you. and. Um, you know, delete the ones that you don't want. Just play with them. Find out what suits you. So any other questions? Oh, sorry. We are on 1.9, and um, if I can help it, we will stay there for a while. <laughs> okay, you have to. Why are you not moving? <coughs> Oh, I, Sean always tells me we're the only college that was a bit wild. <laughs> well, there's another one. Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah. For us, it's, it's just backup and restore and, and plugins. I mean, especially on this side, we've used so much experimental stuff. There are probably so many hacks on our Moodles that I'm not aware of because I joined in 2007. And documentation, as I said earlier, it took me a year just to make sense of what was what and what was where. Um, and we're still uncovering things between us and going, why is that doing that? Why is that there? Um, and it just, it would just be so much of a nightmare at the moment and until, you know, when the Open University moves a, a year later, we might move. <laughs> <laughs>